We begin the current daf, Mesech Tzba Metzir Dav Lama Zayin. We begin 12 lines down at the top of the Amid. We continue our look at the next Mishnah. We continue on this theme of Hamafkid, which is discussing regarding a Pekadin. What do you do in situations when things get a little confusing regarding the Shemer watching people things, not knowing exactly who gave what? are So a guy tells two people, he says, look, I stole from one of you guys a hundred dinarm. I don't know which one of you it is. So Machlik is exactly what do you do in that type of situation? Does he just put down a hundred and he says, look, I did my thing, you guys find it out, or does he have to give each and every one individually? He says, one of your fathers gave me, deposited me a hundred dinarm. And again, I don't know which one it is. What, what's the Allah in that situation? So the idea of that he would have to give each one a hundred dinar. As the Gemara doesn't explain that terminology of the Mishnah, because if you're admitting on your own, so then you enter into the realm of bolots b'dei shemaim. You want to fulfill your heavenly obligation, which some of the some of the points of the Gemara are. On the one hand, you would say that you know he doesn't have to pay because there's a, he's in possession of the money, um, and and we know the halach is that if anyone wants to collect, the, the onus of proof is on them. Again, but then you have the other other side of okay, but what's with your obligation? You, you're not necessarily paying back the guy who rightfully belongs to, him. which that's in contrast to Kotavale when they're claiming from him. Says we have the Machlekes Tanoim. Reb Tarfin says Manir Gizel B'nei Masal. He says, look, guys, uh, it's, I'm not paying 500 to 500 people. I'm, I only owe 100, so I'm just going to put it and then they leave. Reb Kiva says, no, Lo Yisud Derech Mitzvah Sim Deavera. Actually, Sham Gizel Kolach Veechad. You don't know who the guy was that you stole from. You stole from one of the guys. You got to give each and every one back. Because you, you might not be paying back to the right person. Which part of the conversation is also the halacha of Bar Vishema, where, in a sense, they're definite. They're saying, You're the guy I stole from. He's Shema. He's like, I don't know who the guy is. So would you say Bar Yadiv, that, yeah, their claim is better, and therefore that's why he has to give in each and every one of them. And, and, and also the Gemara discusses regarding Manashlishi. What happens if one guy gave 200, one guy gave 100? So each one definitely deserves 100. And what do you do with that third 100? Do you, do you just say, Okay, that 100 we're going to put on the side? Or do you say everything we'll put on the side so that in case one of the guys are lying, so we'll want to get him to admit. So we begin the current daf, Dav Lamad Zayin. We start with the Mishnah relating to this topic of Pekadin, of Hamafkin. So a guy says to two people, he says, look, one of you guys, uh, you guys had your pants over here, whatever, I stole a hundred dinar from one of you guys. Many days we came, I, I don't recall, I don't know which one of you guys I stole from. That's one case. I, or a, a similar idea, is of shalechem mekem hifkeli mana, and that's where it relates to the alochas of pekadin, which is what we're discussing in these mishnayos. The, one of your fathers asked me to watch for him a hundred dinarim. The any days this was a few years ago. I don't remember which one of your fathers it was. I remember you guys, your fathers were together, and I don't know who it is. So what's the alocha? So says the mishnah. Neisin lezem mana ulezem mana. He has to give each and every one of them uh, this mana, this hundred dinarim. Shaydim epiatzmi, because. He's admitting to it on his own, which he wants to explain what type of reasoning is that, why he's obligated to each and every one, the, the mana. He, he doesn't owe each and every one the mana. He can well explain what, are the, what does it mean that he admitted on his own. Now, another case is the Mishnah. If two people deposited by one person. Now, this guy gave 100 dinar, 100 zuz, and this guy gave 200. Now, when they're coming to collect, at a later point in time, they're coming to take back their pekadin. This guy says, I gave you 200. This guy says, I'm the guy who gave you 200. What do you do? It says the Mishnah, So look, you give each and every one, one mana, because that's, you have a sum total, you the shamer, you have 300 in your possession. One guy's supposed to get 100, one guy's supposed to get 200. So each guy is definitely getting 100. So you give this guy 100, give this guy 100. The remaining extra 100 we don't know who gets it. Okay, we have to wait till the never comes, and then he'll tell us who, but, but up until then, we don't know. We're just going to leave it. I mean, BC, BC doesn't like this because he says, Cain, if that's the case, what is the deceiver going to lose? He'll never admit to the truth because why not? I could just say 200. I'm getting my 100 anyways. I'm trying to see if I get the extra 100. This guy will lose. I'm not going to admit because I'll look stupid and I don't lose anything anyway. So what are you gaining by putting the extra 100 on the side? The guy will lose out his extra 100 for no good reason. Ella says, no, play, play his game. 
Call his bluff. Say, you know what? Because of the situation, we're putting all the 300 on the side till the other one comes because we don't know what to do. Oh, suddenly the guy's going to start coughing up. He says, oh, <laughs> whatever. You know, okay, I'll take the 100. Let him get the 200 because suddenly he's losing 100. But if you're just going to put the extra 100 on the side, he's not going to lose anything. It's not going to die. So he says, put everything on the side. And says the Mishnah, another case. B'chein Shnei Kalim. So too, if there's, let's say, two vessels, really the same idea, and the Gemara is going to explain why we bring another case. Uh, so two guys, they're going away for Pesach. They say, look, you know, they give it to a guy to watch. One guy is giving his bowl that's worth 100. Another guy is worth 1,000 zos. Then they come back after Pesach. They say, look, I want my bowl back. It says, I want my bowl back. It says, Each guy saying, mine's the more expensive one. I remember we paid 1,000 for our crystal. This guy's, what are you talking about? This other guy gave a thousand. So what do you do? Says the Mishnah, same idea. That's what the Tanakama is saying. So you give the smaller one to one of them. Obviously, that's at least the minimum that each one's getting. And we Meaning you sell the bigger one. And from the value of the more expensive one, you'll give a value of a smaller one. So I mean, each guy, let's say, is going to get a hundred Zuz worth of a vessel, because one guy gave one worth a hundred, one gave worth a thousand. We don't know who it is. So each guy will get one guy will get the hundred dollar, hundred dollar one. The other guy will get the thousand. We'll sell it. We'll give him a hundred out of that. The remaining nine hundred. Okay, we got to put on the side. We don't know who that belongs to. Again, the Rebbe says, "What are you talking about? Kim, that's the case. My hips are Rama. What's the deceiver going to lose out? He's not losing anything. It, it, it's worth him the risk. He's anyways getting what he what he, what, what was his." Again, your beast says, no. You know what? Because of the circumstance, we're taking everybody's bowl, we're putting it on the side. You can't get it. We don't know whose is what. The guy's going to say, oh, whatever, you know. And so therefore, he'll admit. So therefore, uh, that's why uh, you have to put everything on the side. Now, the Gemara asks on the ratio of the Mishnah, where we said that when one guy tells two people, I stole from one of you a mana, or your father deposited by me a mana, so then the halach is going to be that um, uh, you're going to have to give each and every one that mana. So the Gemara says, Alma, you see, misveka, out of doubt, mafkina mamaina, that we collect money. Because what, what, what is the situation over here? He's telling each and every one, I don't know who I owe it to. So there's a suffix. And out of the suffix, we're making him give misafik to each one that was maybe the father who deposited or the guy you stole from, they have to give a mana to them. Meaning, meaning what's, what are we saying? We don't say that when this guy claims and then this guy responds and says, I don't know if it's to you or to your friend, we don't say that we remain with the money in the possession of the chazaka of the defendant that, okay, we shouldn't make him lose money because he's the muhsik, he's the one who's in possession of the money. And we'll say, okay, let it stay till Yahweh never comes. Like we see in the safe of our mission that says that concept. We don't know. We don't know what to do. Put it on the side of the We don't say that. We say, okay, you don't know. You got to pay to this guy mana. You got to pay this guy mana because, because maybe you owe it to them. That's what it sounds like from our Mishnah that we'll say that we'll collect me Safik. Says above Ramina, that seems to be contradicted from the safe of our own Mishnah, as we mentioned. Our Mishnah said, Shnaim Shef Kidu Etzel Echad. Said if two guys deposited by one person, Zemana, Vizemasayim. This guy gave 100 dinar, this guy gave 200 dinar. Zemashalim, Masayim, Vizemashalim, Masayim. Then they come back after a few weeks. And this guy says, Mine was the 200. And this guy says, Mine was the 200. What's the Allah? Says the Mishnah. Nice and Zemana, Zemana. Okay, so each guy obviously at least has one mana uh, uh, worth. Vasha Yehim Munach, And what's with the rest? The rest we don't say that he has to give them Misafik 200 and him 200. No, we say you only give. A uh, hundred and the rest is munach. So that sounds like because misafik you don't collect. So this seems to be a contradiction in our own Mishnah. What do you do? Misafik. Do you have to pay misafik or not? Oh, so we'll see. Uh, that, that, that is the words. And that, that seems to be what the Gemara is going to say. But right now the Gemara understands it. Like what is, what is maida? What, what was he being maida? He, all he was being maida was that, yeah, I know. It's one of you guys. I just don't know who. And the same is also like, is like, oh, so yeah, I know it's one of you guys, I just don't know who. So what's the what's difference between the cases? 
So Omalei, so regarding the question, the Gemara answers and he says, what? Pikadoin, the case of the Seifa, even though the Gemara is going to right away jump in and say it's not like that, but definitely one of the cases of the Seifa is a deposit, a gezel, which the case of the Rasha was when he stole from one of two people, Kodamis? You're posing a contradiction from the case of a deposit on the case of theft? Oh, that's not a difficulty. Gezel in the Rasha, the Mishnah, which we said that, yeah, Misafi, you have to pay because the other is Surah. The guy, the guy something, he, he stole from somebody. He did something wrong. So Katsura Abundance, Surah Abundance penalized him. It says, hey, buddy, you stole. You did something wrong. You, you're going to have to have the harsher sentence over here. You don't know who it is. Pay up to every single person. They caught him, but the Seifo, where they asked him to watch something, he didn't do anything wrong. Now we just don't know. You said it, yours the 200. You said yours the 200. Like, I don't know. So the Kuntzur Rabban, Rabban didn't penalize him. He says, guys, okay, we're going to put it all you on. I'm not going to pay out for each guy 200. I'm going to lose because you guys are one of you guys are lying. That's how the Gemara originally answers the question. But then the Gemara says, but wait a second. Right. Yeah, so that's what the Gemara is going to ask right now. You have to know what, why, why was the Gemara saying that. Um, the Gemara says, but Verami Pekadna Pekadna Verami Gezel Gezel. The Gemara says, you're making like the only case was in the Reisha Gezel and only in the Seifa was Pekadna. It's not true. You have, you could ask on Gezel and Gezel and get Pekadna Pekadna. And don't tell me because they're different categories and different, different halachas. Pekadna Pekadna because the Tani Reisha, the next case in the Mishnah, was not just a case of Gezela. It was, I of shul echad mekem hivkir es limana. One of your fathers deposited by me a mana, and I don't know which one it is. So what does the Mishnah say? He's got to give each and every one, even though it's Pekadin, he has to give each one of them a mana. But I mean, that's contradicting from the Seva of the Mishnah, where it's also Pekadin, and there, suddenly, we don't make you pay out to each one 200. You give 100 and 100, and the remaining 100 is left aside. But that's a, that's a steer in the Halacha of Pekadin. So, on that, on Marava, Rabbi says, not difficult. Why? Because Reisham was talking about this. See, it's a different type of a case, the Reisha and the Seifa, even though both talking about Pekad. Why? The Reisha was one guy deposited money by him. He doesn't remember which father, but it was only one guy who gave money. It's as if that it was deposited to him with two different bundles. What that means to say is, as we'll explain shortly, that when there's two different people and they do it at two different times, the haloch is the havale lemedik. He should have been careful. He should have analyzed, well, who gave him 100 and who gave him 200? Because it was at two different times. Why, why don't you know? That's a, that's a negligence on your part as a shamer. Like, you don't know? What I gave you, what's that doing to me that you took someone else's thing three weeks before and now you don't know? You're negligent. You would have to give it back to me. So when one guy gives to a guy, and he's like, oh, yeah, I don't know which one of your father. So that's your fault. That's your negligence. Pay everyone a mana because you don't remember. That's not an excuse. Say, oh, well, I don't know what to do. So you might owe me. You might owe because my father might owe me. So he has to give everyone a mana. In contrast, the safer, two people deposited by him money. One guy gave 200. One guy gave 100. And it was, they came together. So it's as if they trust each other to deposit their, both their pektainas in one bundle. So it's almost like as if they gave it to them in one bundle. Where if it was a one bundle, the loy have a Leila Medic, he doesn't have to analyze what's inside of it for this guy and what's inside for his friend. Because you guys are giving it together. You obviously trust each other. Like, I'm going to start checking what you guys are saying you're giving together. Now, even though the truth is it wasn't in one bundle, but since that, and we're explaining that's the case of what the Mishnah is talking about. For example, we're both deposited together at one time in front of each other. So they're revealing, obviously, their consciousness that they don't suspect each other to say, oh, you know, I want you to know because... He might claim he's the one with 200. No, 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 he's not. I'm the one with 200, he's the one with 100. With the Amal Hu, so then he could tell them, and say, look, you guys yourselves, you guys weren't particular. You guys gave it together. I'm not kapidna. I'm going to start being particular and saying, well, who, what, when? You guys yourself. So now it's not my fault. It's not my negligence. So therefore, that's why in the case of the Sefi, hey, Munach. In the Reisha, it is my negligence. Why don't you know who it was? 
It's like two people giving at two different times because it was one person says, I don't know which one of your fathers, or you don't know which one. It's like your fault. You got to go until you give back to the guy that deposited by you. Comes to the safe. It's like, you guys gave it together. So it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like one month. I'm going to start investigating when you guys are not investigating. And therefore, that's why he's going to be part. So that answers the case of Pekad. Now, Virami Gezla Gezel. Says the Gemara, but there's the contradiction of the case of Gezel too. Because Ketani Hacha, we learned in our Mishnah, the opening case, Amal if you tell two people, Gezalti Le'echad Mekem Mana, I look, I stole from one of you guys a mana. But any days it became, uh, I don't know which one of you guys I stole a hundred zoos from. Oi, or, then there was another case, which we just quoted before, one of your fathers deposited by me a hundred zoos. I don't know which one it is. But regarding the case of, of we want the first case of Gizela, what do we say that Allah is? We said, look, you got to give each guy a hundred in the arm. You don't know who it is that you stole from. That's the case of Gizela. Says the Gemara Vinamin, that seems to be contradictory on the mission of Sechtas Yavamas. What does the mission say in Sechtas Yavamas? Gozel Echad Michamisha. Someone robbed one of five people. Veni De Ezman Gozel doesn't know who he robbed from. The guys, they all had their, their, their trousers there. They went swimming in the pool. He picked out one of the pants and he stole a hundred dinarim. A few weeks later, it's Harata. He doesn't know who it was that he stole from. Now, each one of the boys, Zerma Isa Gozel. This guy's saying, You stole from me. Somebody says, this is, you, know, you stole from me. Because I remember, I also had 500. I didn't know where 100 went. Everyone's claiming that, you know, you stole from me. What's the Allah? So, Manich Gizel Benayim Umistalik Divir Tafir. Tafir says, you know what you do? You didn't steal from five people $500. You stole from one guy $100. But each guy's claiming that, you're the, that he's the guy. So, you put down the $100 between them. He says, guys, you fight it out and you leave. That's Divir Tafir. That's the Vinir Tafir. Now, Alma, what do we see from there? Misveka, when there's a doubt, we're not going to extract from you to pay more because of a doubt. Because what I mean, we say, the money remains in the possession of the owner. He doesn't owe more than a hundred. Out of the doubt, who it belongs to, we're not going to collect. Now, the Gemara first has to clarify and say, wait a second, why is this a question? Who said that the title of our mission is Rabtarfin? That you're asking from a contradiction on our Mishnah that says, yes, Misafik, you do have to give it to each and every one. Maybe our Mishnah is like the Bekiva, who he actually disagrees over there in Mesech des Yavamis, and he says, no, this is not the way that's going to get you out from your sin of, of stealing until you pay the Gizel to each and every one. So that would be like the Allah of our Mishnah. What are you asking that Astira from Rabtarfin, who said he's the town of our Mishnah? Says the Gemara, I'll prove that he is because the Tony Allah that he on that mission Yavamas, there's a Brisa that clarifies and says, Oh, but my Reb Tarfin, Reb Tarfin agrees, and he quotes our mission as halacha. When you tell two people, I stole from one of you guys a hundred dinarim, I don't know which one it is, you give each and every one a mana. So obviously, Reb Tarfin agrees in that case, which is halacha of our Mishnah, and then the question is, so what's the difference? Which Tyson, the Master of the Tani, says, why? You could have just asked from the Bryce on that mission itself. Why does he admit? So says, Tyson, you're right, but we prefer to ask a contradiction of Mishnayis. It's very much stronger to ask a stira of Mishnayis, Mishnayi and our mission over here. But one thing is, we're showing Rav Tavon agrees to that Allah, and he's the town of our Mishnah. So, so what's the Pshat? Why, why is that any different when you tell two people it sounds the same case? It says the Gemara, there's a difference. And this is what someone mentioned before. Hasim over there, in the case of the Mishnah in Yavamas, is the Kotavile. They are claiming from him to say, hey, you stole the money from me. He doesn't want to give, but what halacha requires him. So Misafik, you're right, we cannot obligate him to give in every single person. They didn't steal from five people. So therefore we say, yeah, that's it. Just put down the $100, walk away. Whoever's the rightful owner can take it. Whoever's a Ghana, let him steal it. Not your responsibility. Hach over here in our Mishnah and that Brisa of Reb Tarfin is when you want to fulfill your heavenly obligation, meaning on his own, he's coming to consult and ask the Rabbanim. He says, what should I do that I don't get an Einish, I don't get a punishment? Where now we definitely say, look, you're not fulfilling your heavenly obligation until you give to both of them because if you're going to say Munach at Shebel comes out that because of you, the victim is going to lose that because he has no proof. So 
Midei Shemaim, which is obviously a higher standard, is gonna, you're not, you're not going to get your kapar, you're not going to get your exemption from the Einish until you actually pay up. So then you got to give every, every single one a mana. Vir is talking about Meikradin. Meikradin, Halacha says that you don't have to give um, to every... Yeah. Yeah, he agrees to Reb Kiva, as we'll see in the mid days. You want to know if it was five that you're saying the why would it say two and not five? You want to know maybe. You want to know maybe because five would be already too much, and then maybe we the double. Right, right. I, I don't know if that's if the number two is necessarily the issue. That it could be also um, the case of where he's telling them, where he's telling them, I stole from one of you a mana, and I don't know which one. It could be the Bryce that picked the case of what our Mishnah spoke about, um, or maybe it's just more common. Oh uh, yeah, in the what's the difference in the Mishnah Yavam is that there he's saying I don't know, and here he's saying it's like Oim Malishnaim. He's like walking over to them and he's telling them, yeah, I hear. Why is it pick two versus five? Yeah, good question. But the Gemara says Dekanami precise reading um, to, of the rationale of our Mishnah that it's coming to be Yisu De Shemayim from the punishment and not Mikra Din is because the Tani we learn that it tells us the reasoning is. And this is what we had the cryptic words in our Mishnah, Shohidim be It says, oh, because he admitted on his own. Meaning, what did our Mishnah mean to say? No one was claiming anything from him. Sounds like he's coming on his own to consult. What should I do? Ah, Shmamina, that infers the idea that we were saying because he just wants to take care of his heavenly obligation. That's why it says, Shohidim be Because if it was not Shohidim be if it was that he says, I don't know, then actually he wouldn't have to give to you every single person. And it's only because Oimer, he says, or like our Mishnah says, that's what we have to give to every single individual. Now, Amamar, the Gemara goes back to what we just mentioned before. We said, Hossam over there in the Mishnah Masech to Yabamas, that when Reb Tarfin tells us over there, which seemed to be a contradiction to our Mishnah, which he holds of, that you, you don't have to give to every single person. We said, this is the like, he said that they're claiming from him. They're claiming from him. He doesn't have to give to every single person. In our Mishnah was when he's being moida, he wants to be Yitzchib and then he has to give every single person. But says the Gemara, when, when they're claiming from him, the, the Ganev, Matoyin, what is he claiming to every single person that we say, oh, he could just put the gazelle between them and he could leave? What is he saying? What, what's his defense to every guy who says, you stole from me? So we have two different opinions. Review the Amarav, he says, Hello, Shoisik. He says that. The guy himself is quiet, and he's not saying anything. Ramas Namarav, he says, no, hala, as he continued to base, is tseveach. That he's screaming and he's telling each and every one again, he says, I don't recognize you. I don't know that, I'm, that you're the guy that I stole from. So the Gemara explains these two different opinions. Manda mahala tseveach, according to this one who holds that, it has to be where he's screaming and saying, I don't know who you are. Because of a shtika, if he was quiet, would be as the classic idea of kaida, would be like adm- admission. So if he's quiet, and you're admitting that he's the guy you stole from, then you would have to pay to every guy who, who is telling you that you stole and you're being quiet. But Amanda Allah Allah Shaisik, according to one that says that, no, it's talking about where he's quiet. Shtika dahach alav kaidahu. Being quiet over here would not ad- ad- infer admission. Why? Because Matsi Amalek could tell him, this is why I was quiet. Every single one of the guys who came and said, you stole from me, you stole from me, you stole from me, is Damina Dil Mahayu. Because I said, maybe he's the guy. And not because I'm admitting, I just don't know. So therefore I'm being quiet. So that's the Machlaik is regarding, would this only be if he's screaming and saying, well, I don't know who you are, and therefore he's going to be, only have to give 100 and let them fight it out? Or is it even if he's quiet, where, because that doesn't admit it doesn't infer Haida, it's just because he just doesn't know. Now, another point the Gemara goes back to, Amamar, we had said, we're going to have Mishnah Mesech Zivamas, like Reb Tarfin, we said that, okay, he, he stole from one of five people, doesn't know who it is. So Reb Tarfin's opinion was, Menich Gizel Benayim Mastalik. So that's it. 
he, he provides them with one payment and he's absolved of his obligation. And because we say, uh, out of doubt, Bezin cannot compel him to, to pay the sides for his uh, moral obligation to pay. But the Gemara says, wait a second. So what's going to happen? So you're telling me that they're going to take it, whoever's going to take it, they're all going to take it, and then he's going to leave? You know what comes out is that this Ganev is... Um, is, is, is taking from them, uh, he's, he's creating a situation that is causing a loss to the real victim uh, forever. Because it sounds like they're all going to split it, and, uh, or one of the guys are going to take it, but not necessarily is the right victim, because everyone's claiming that it's his, is going to get it. Well, that's the, well, why would we say, this guy stole from one of five people and, and now he's creating a situation where, as the Gemara is going to ask from now, that this should not be a called Dalm Gabar. This should be a situation of, of, um, of leaving it out of, 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 a, of a possible problem. Why? So the Gemara compares it. It says, He says, Any time that you find something that, um, that it does not have a simon, and it's, uh, it's on the side of a place that's a little bit protected, where it's not common that people walk by over there. So it, you're not sure. Maybe it was deliberately left over there just to put it on the side, you know, just to hide it a little bit. So you're not sure if it was placed over there deliberately or not. So what's the halacha? Like it's chile layito. Initially, the guy who finds it should not take it. Why? Because what's going to happen is when the owner's going to come, he's not going to find it. He doesn't have a simon to announce it for. So therefore, if you see it, you should leave it over here. And let the owner come, and he'll take it. Now, for sure, if it's deliberately left over there, the Mishnah Torah of Chafeim of Eiz, if you find a kli in the ashba that's covered over, where you know for sure a guy hid it over there, leave it, but you're not supposed to touch it. Leave it as it is. What happens if a not? What happens if a guy took it? Then lay answer. You don't put, put it back. And this, this is the main point of the question. That if someone comes along and says, it's mine, but he doesn't give a simon, you don't give it back to him, because maybe it's not his. And maybe the real owner is going to ultimately come and he's going to give witnesses that he put over there. So therefore, Allah is you leave it in the hand of the guy who took it until the uh, Nabi comes. Because when we say, Lo yachse, Rashi explains, it doesn't mean that it should be his. Because in the beginning, it came to him, Isura, if it was deliberately placed over there, it was prohibited for him to take it. So obviously we see that um, when you have a situation of doubt, whose it is, what do you do? You leave it in the hand of who is holding on to it until we verify who, who, who is it is definitively. So the Gemara's question is, in this situation where this guy has to give it back to one of these five people, you can't just put it down, call Dom Gemara, have to find it out. You have to hold on to it until we definitively verify who it is. Just like the case of Sabek Yenuach or Vadi Yenuach, where you shouldn't touch it, but if you did, then you got to hold on to it. Even the guy comes along and says it's mine, you don't say, okay, look, whoever it is, look, you take it, call the alum. No, it's your responsibility until we def- we de- we 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 able to verify whose it is. So why over here do we say, oh, yeah, no, just put it, let them fight it out, and, the, you know, let the best man win. But we don't. We don't say that. We say that you have to wait till you verify. So Rav Safra, he says, you're right. This that we said, that um, he puts the hundred dinarm and between them umistalik and he leaves it doesn't mean that oh then they'll take it and they'll leave it doesn't mean that they're going to take it away from him it actually means viyaniach meaning he'll leave it in his hand until we verify so what does it mean mistalik it just means we we we, we do a siluk hadin we end the 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 judgment and when it says viyaniach gizil b'neim it doesn't mean that he leaves it between them like the guys are sitting around like musical chairs or when the music stops whoever could grab it first wins no, it means he lives it in court. And he tells the court, he says, verify whose it is and let him take. And he's mystolic from the din. And the gazela is left in his hand until Yon never comes. So it's actually not the way it sounds like Rip Tarfan, like as he throws it between them and let them fight it out. No, it means that actually he just, we just end the, 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 the court case and, and he leaves it in court and let, and let, and until we actually verify. Now, once we introduced this Mishnah in Yavamas, we were talking up until now um, the opinion of Reb Tarfin, because we wanted to know if Mishnah Yivamis contradicts our 
uh, 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 seemingly in our Mishnah, and we said that it's Reb Tarfin, who, as we learned in the Bryce in that Mishnah, that he agrees to Allah Mishnah, we ask, okay, it's a contradiction. Now, there was another opinion over there that we referenced in passing from Rashi, that's that of Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Tafin says, you could just put the Gizela between them and you're done. Rabbi Kiva, however, doesn't say like that. He says, no, that's not going to get you out of your obligation because you stole. Until you pay each and every single person, you, you can't, that's not, not going to let you off the hook. On that safer, of when you steal from one of five people and Yavama's over there in Daf Kofi Yudchas, Amalei Abayi Lerava, he says, asking on the other Tana, who he didn't speak about up until now. He says, Rabbi Kiva, did Rabbi Kiva really say, that's not going to get you, absolve you from your sin that you stole to just put it between, like, between them and say, look, you guys fight about it. You got to pay up what you stole to every single person who may be the guy that you stole from. That's what Rikiva says. Says So we see. Rikiva holds, out of doubt, we extract money because we don't know, but out of the doubt, you're going to have to pay each and every single person. And that is, we don't say, we don't say that, okay, this guy's in possession of the money, he gets to hold on to it. No, out of that, you have to give to every single person. It says the Gemara of it seems to be contradictory of Mishnah in Baba Basra. What does the Mishnah say? Mishnah quotes the following case. There was a, a building that collapsed on a mother and on, a, and a, on her son. And you don't know who died first. Now, the mother had assets that she inherited from her father's household. Now, the Yershim come, or Yershim always complain, but the Yershim come now and they say, Yersha ben Oymrim, they say, The mother died first. So what's the significance of the mother died first? That means to say, the son was still alive for those few minutes. He inherited from her. And now, then after the son dies, we inherit the son. So we get the Yerusha of what this mother has. The Yersha aim, but the Yersha of the mother, meaning her family, they say to the relatives of the son, who are from the father's family, I mean their paternal family, who they're coming to inherit the son, they say, no, the son died first. Therefore, he did not inherit his mother to bequeath to you her estate because he doesn't yarshim when he's in the grave already. So rather the son died first, and then the mother died, so we inherit the mother. So we're not sure who gets to inherit the estate of the mother. So says the Mishnah, Elu, both of them meaning Bishami and Basil, who, although they disagree regarding other Yerushas, as the Gemara mentions in Perak Mishames, and Baba Basra, and Dav Kofnazain Kofnad Khaz, Bishami say, okay, Achloki, you split it. Basil says, no, the Chasm Chas Kasim. We're not talking about his, his money. He doesn't have any money to this up. It's not just the mother. The mother has like a, the mother of the boy had a, like a, uh, had a $5 million Yerusha from her, from her wealthy father. So he has nothing. Yeah, right. So we're just talking about her, her at least for what we're focusing on. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they're each claiming. I don't know what it means they're claiming, but like they all want the money, you know, but we don't know what to do. So in general, Bishami says, Yechleku, okay, you guys split it. Bishol says, no, no, chasem chasem. Whoever is the muxik, as the Gemara over there explains about Basra, who is, who is considered the, the one in possession of it up until this point. So on that, says our Mishnah, in this case, both Bishami and Sil and they agree, Sheikhleku, that you're going to split it. Here it's different for whatever reason than it is in those other cases that they disagree. Bishol will agree that Yechleku. However, from Rabbi Kiva, this is what we're asking the contradiction from, because we're talking about Rabbi Kiva. And Rabbi Kiva says, no, Maidani Bazu, meaning here I agree, and Rashi says, even though I generally hold like Beishamai, and I say by all those other Yerushas, Yechleiku, which Tracy says, no, although he says the top Tracy, although he says Maidani is not because of Tamid Beishamai, because in the first part of Yavamas, we see clearly Rabbi Kiva is like this hill by Tzara Zabas, not like Beishamai. Rather, it's just because we said the terminology, Elevei Lemaidim, so it says Maidani, but really it's no Maidani, because he doesn't really, it's not Maida. But Rashi says Maida, whatever. The point is, it says in this case, I agree to Basil. So although the Tana just quoted that Basil would agree, Yachleku, says, no, no, no. In this case, I agree, 
Shanachasim Beches Kasan, which is how it normally is, Basil holds, not that it's going to be a Chleku, which is a Machleku Samaram and Chesk and Perik and Obadim Baba Vasra. Who is the Muxik? The Gemara explains the reasoning over there. But what, the main thing that we're asking from is what do we see from Rabbi Kiva? Is that we say when we have a suffix, we say, Uki Mimaina, Becheskes Mare. The money remains in the possession of the one who is in possession of Baltuna, which is what the halach of a chazaka is. And that's why he's saying, no, not going to be yachleku. The halach is going to be that uh, whoever is in possession of the nechsim alug, nechsim tzayim barzal, whatever the type of nechassman is, you're the muxik, no yachleku. Wait a second, that contradicts what Rebbe Kiva is saying in Yavamas. In Yavamas he's saying that we don't say, okay, money mechazkes mare. There's a safik, so that's it, you got to give me safik. So does he hold up Ukim Mino Cheskis Mare or not? Yvamas makes it sound like that he doesn't hold of it. Because if he did hold up a Chazaka, so why give him a Safik? Chazaka means it's yours. And then in Baba Basra, he's saying that, no, we do say Ukim Mino Cheskis Mare. So although there's a Safik, you would say Yachleku. He says, no, no Yachleku. Why not? Because there's a Muxik. So you go with Muxik or you don't go with Muxik? That's the. And if I mean, no Muxik, then you look how you would say Yachleku. But Rabbi Kiva is saying that in the case of Baba Basra, there is a muxik. The woman's, these nechassim, the muxik was her family. Uh, Ksuba is this person, whatever it is, whatever the muxik is. But we go with muxik. And then in Yavamis, he's not going with muxik. So Amalei, so Rabbi says back to Abaya, <clears throat> he says, not the same case. Why? Hasim over there, Shema v'Shema. It's maybe and maybe. <clears throat> Both of them don't really know um, who, whose it is. Uh, in the case of the when there was a building that collapsed, no one knows. Like we say, you can't. We don't know who died. So, so therefore, you're going to say the chasam of a and we say, okay, we don't know. You remain with a chazaka. But the case in the mission of Zivamis, when one guy stole from five people, that is body v'shema. Oh, that's a different type of a case. Every single one is saying you stole from me is a definitive claim, and this guy is saying I don't know. I don't know where I stole from. Ah, oh, Bari B'Shema. When one guy's saying definite, one guy's saying maybe, oh, the Bari is stronger. But that's why over there, you're not going to go with the Chazaka. Because it's not a Glata Suffolk. It's because it's a Bari B'Shema. When you have a B'Shema, yeah, then we'll go with the Chazaka. But the Gemara says, wait a second, but must need in the Hacha. But in our Mishnah, we have the following case. Amal if let's say he said to two people that Gizazi Lech Mechamana, I stole from one of you a mana, where the Shem of Hashemahu, where it's, it's the guys telling them, they don't know, he doesn't know. But Tony, what do we learn? You have to give each and every one a mana. Well, I thought when it's Shem of Hashemah, you go with Chazaka and you don't have to give. Now, says the Gemara, my Rebbe Kiva, how do we know the Mishnah is Rebbe Kiva that we're going to ask from Rebbe Kiva on our Mishnah? Maybe our Mishnah is actually, as we said on Manaf, like Rabbi Tarfin, says, no, the Gitani Allah Dahi, because we learned again in that b'risa of the case of Gozlech and Mechamich in the Mishnah, 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 there's a b'risa that clarifies, as we mentioned on Manaf, which Rabbi which, 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 which Tarfin, which we're going to quote again, but that's going to prove something regarding Rabbi Kiva. The b'risa said, Moed Rabbi Tarfin, Tarfin agrees by Mother Shnai when he tells two people, Gizat Lech Mechamana, which is the case of our Mishnah. That is stole from one of you guys a mana. And I don't know which one. So that Allah was, we said, like the case of a Mishnah. Yes, he has to give each and every one of them a mana. Wait a second. Your Tavern was Maida. Laman Maida. Who is he agreeing to? Rabbi Kiva Bapukte. That was the Machlegis in the Mishnah Yavam. It's the Machlegis of Tavern Rabbi Kiva. So that means Rabbi Kiva agrees to the halacha because Rabbi Tavern is agreeing to him on that halacha. So. Wait a second, that seems to contradict. Again, Rabbi Kiva, that means he's the, he also agrees to the halacha of Mishnah, and we're saying that you're not going to go with Ukiman Mechaz Kismari. Now, says the Gemara that Umimai de Shema Beshemahu, um, well, how do we know that it's a case of Shema Beshemahu that we're asking from, right? Because with Bar Beshemahu, we don't say Ukiman, that wouldn't be difficult. Says the Gemara, to prove its point, how do I know my, what I'm asking is difficult? That our Mishnah is Shem Hashem. So I'll tell you. Chada, first of all, the Loikatani. The Mishnah does not say Toivanaisai, that they claim from him. That it doesn't say, you stole from me. He's telling them. And obviously they're Shema, and he's Shema. That's point number one. Void, moreover, Hotani Rebchia, 
Rebchia taught in the Brisa of this Mishnah of Mesefta Zivamis, when the guy says, I stole from one of you guys, in his Brises, he, he taught the halacha of our Mishnah of Amal Hashnaim, Gizalti Echel Mikem, and I don't know which one, he taught it like this. Ze Oimer en Yedea. Ze Oimer en Yedea. Each one saying, I don't know. And still the Mishnah is telling us, which was the Brais is quoting the same halacha, you give to each one of them a mana. As we learned in our Mishnah. Now, obviously from Rebbe Chia's Kirsa, it's clear that it's Shema Veshema. So we're back to the question, if that's the case, if Shema Veshema, didn't you tell me in your resolution of the Mishnah Baba Vasa and Yabamas, there's a difference between Bar Veshema and Shema Veshema, that by Shema Veshema, you go with Uki Moni Mecheskis but our mission is a case of Shema B'Shema, and you're not going with Ches Kismari, you're saying that we're going to collect Misafik. So on that says the Gemara, but Kimnala, we already explained that our mission is different. As Babalot says, Yidei Shemayim, when he's coming to fulfill his heavenly obligation. When he's coming to fulfill his obligation, then we'll say, you have to give to each and every one. As Taisi in Divin Maschal Mimai, at the end says, that means that when your Tarfan was telling to Rabbi Kiva that he's Maida, but just like you say by Shema B'Shema, that you have to pay to each and every one to fulfill your heavenly obligation. So that's the way I would admit to you also over here is this Allah of Babalat says Yidei Shemayim. And that's why you're going to be Chayv L'Kal Echad V'Echad. But you're right, generally you wouldn't be because it's a Shema B'Shema and you're keep hold, you go with Okim Eloyin V'Ches Kismare. But now the Gemara asks on what we mentioned before. We mentioned on Omer Aleph a, a concept of Rava in explanation of the Gemara. So on that point, Omali Ravinu Ravashi says, Miyama Rabbi, did Rabbi really say Kol Krichas whenever you have two different bundles? If you recall, we were, we were trying to explain in our Mishnah the concept of the difference between the Resha and the Seifa. Uh, which places it brings a riot from here that it seems like that we hold the Sibin Lamaskan as the Gemara is asking on it. We wanted to know why in the Resha did we say that you have to give to each and every one. And the Seifa, if you recall, the same type of a case with a Bakadin, he said no. One guy says his 200, one guy the 100. <laughs> okay, yehi munach. We wanted to know what's the difference. So Rav says, oh, I'll tell you. Because in the ratio, when there was one person, one of their fathers, you don't remember who it is, he says, that's like two kriches. That's like two different times that people did it. So then Havalela made that he should have been careful. And if not, it's your negligence. You have to give to every single person. Did Rav really say such Allah, says the Gemara? Why, what's difficult? Because the Gemara quotes another teaching. Everyone agrees that is regarding the Machlekes, Reb Tavrin, Reb Kiva, and Mesech, and Bechorist of Yudchest and Mebeiz, B'Shnaim Shev Kidu Eitzel Raya. When two people deposit by a shepherd, this guy gave one lamb, and this one gave two lamb. This one says, both are mine. This one says, the both are mine. What's the halacha? Says Rav, everyone agrees that um, uh, that he just puts it between them. The shepherd just puts it between them and, and he leaves. Now, as Rashi explains, that's a case of two kriches because even if they deposited one in front of the other, but that's something that's visible. Who brought one and who brought two? As Rashi explains, in other words, I understand by bundles of money that since they're both bundled, okay, you can forget who deposited the larger bundle and who deposits the smaller bundle? Because they're doing it together in front of each other. Like we said, that's like That's like you guys didn't care. How am I supposed to care? But by, by, by sheep, that's pretty obvious who's bringing one, who's bringing two. So that's like shtei kriches. And even so, Rav is saying everyone agrees you're going to be potter, which is not like we mentioned before, because even though it's like two kriches, we said that you're going to be potter. Didn't Rav say in such a case you'd be chayv? Amalei said to him, no, Hasim Kishkidu Beedrish Alraish Lemidaita. They were talking about where they deposited by him without his awareness, which the bottom Taisa says, Love Dafka that has to be without his awareness. It just, in other words, what it means to say is he just didn't see. So now you can't say Havalila Maidak. He said, Okay, guys, you know, put into my put into my barn, no problem, I'll watch your, your sheep. So that's not like they, they did it together. So I'm uh, I'm not expected to, to know you guys didn't care. I'm expected to care. So therefore, that's why. Uh, he's not going to be responsible, and therefore everyone would agree that he would be potter. Now in the Mishnah we said, The Mishnah said the same halacha two times. It said it once regarding money, and it says also the same thing regarding two vessels. One's worth a hundred, one's worth a thousand. So again, that same halacha that we had by money, we said the same thing over here. What do we do 
in this type of situation. So it says the Gemara it was necessary to say the Machlaikis in both money and in vessels. Why? Because the Yeshmin and Hachamaisa had we only said the first case of money, but he come Rabban, and that's where the rabbis say, I mean, the, the Tanakama, that each one gets a mana, because there's no loss to return um, the, the, the money in the part that's definite, which we said, okay, the rest is Yehi Munach, but whatever's a hundred and a hundred, give it, and the remaining hundred you'll leave out. Abahaba regarding Kalem de Kapseida, the Gadol, there's a loss of the larger vessel because one Giris and Rashish, you're going to have to break it to, like, you know, take off a hundred dollars worth. Other Giris, so I say, you're not going to break it, you're going to sell it. But the point is, it's going to be a loss for the guy who really it belongs to, and Eliyahu never will say whose it is. It comes out with the fact that you sold it, you caused the loss. The guy's losing his thousand dollar vessel. So maybe over there, Eman Mogla I would say maybe Rabban Agri Rabbi said that no, we'll leave everything. Because you don't want the guy to lose his vessel. That's different than money, where the money is the same money. And be it Maha, had we said the case of Kalim, I would say Balkam Rabbi, maybe only with the Rabbi says that it should be left. Um, so, you know, because there's going to be a loss of a Bahach. But regarding money, even Mogla Rabban, I would say maybe he agrees to Rabban on that, yeah, so give everyone what's for sure theirs and, the, and what's the stuff you leave over. So Tricha therefore was necessary to say uh, the case of money too, but the Gemara doesn't like that because the Gemara continues about Lama Chesman out. How could you say that Rabbi might have agreed in the case of money? But by the time Rabbi is clearly Misham Hefzad Arame, who is because of, we need the, the, the deceiver to lose. And since that's his reason, who cares if it's clear or it's money? How could you entertain to say that, oh, but maybe money would agree to Rabbanan because no one's really losing anything? Then, and, and, and then, there, why, so again, why was it necessary to say the ratio of money? Not because to say maybe Rabbi would agree over there. And he's not, he wants Tafka, the guy's money, to be left on the side. So the one says, you're right, El Tabel Rabban Itzrak. Really, both are necessary for Rabban. In other words, we really wanted to teach you the teaching of Rabban, and that's what we taught two cases. And the truth is, if we said Kalim first, you're right, you wouldn't need to say any more the case of money. Because if, if Kali, we were selling it, for sure by money, where you're not losing anything. But now that we said the case of money first, then we subsequently said the case of Kalim to say, not only over here, where there's no loss of breaking or selling a vessel, but even this, where there's going to be a loss of the larger vessel, we would say this, and that's what's called Boloizu Abzukatani. Not only by money, where yeah, of course, why shouldn't we put aside, you know, give you 100, give you 100, that's for sure, each one's getting in the many 100 put aside. But maybe by Caleb, I would say no, because the guy's going to lose his, his expensive vessel. Maybe that we wouldn't, that's what saying, that even with the Rabban would agree. But you're right, if we said Caleb, that we wouldn't have to say the case of money, it's just what's called loizu abzukatan. I think it's any time. Both of those.